May I start? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Ryo Nakamura from the University of Tokyo, and maybe everyone does not does not know that uh, I was an uh, organization committee member in the past uh, NetDev 1.2 in the Tokyo, but I couldn't attend the conference because the, it was uh, three days before my PhD defense. Wow. So <laughs> I'm really I'm very happy to be here and make a presentation. So my talk is about uh, AF graph. It is a new address family for containerized application. So a container is uh, just an application execution environment, as you know, and the microservice architecture is a very popular now to, for today's the very large information systems. And in such principle, uh, very the monolithic system is decomposed into the multiple services, and our service is. Uh, implemented in a container and uh, deployed as a container in such uh, container clusters controlled by such Kubernetes. And so this talk is about uh, container networking. So container is a separated namespace in a Linux host. So we have to connect the container, the separated namespace to the other containers or outer networks or the host network stack. So we need to connect to connect the different instances. So to do this, the uh, very the conventional approach is to use the adapters and rings abstraction. So this abstraction is de derived from the physical machines. So physical machine has a adapter, the network interface card, and uh, connected to the other outer networks for the switch or routers using the link, the fiber or UTP and so on. So the, for example, the virtual machine environment, this, the virtual machine network architecture is also using this abstraction. The virtual machines has adapted the top interface or bad IO interface and connected to the host network stack and the host network stack performs the NAT or switch and so on. And in the container network stack, uh, container network stack architecture, it is the same. So container is a separated name, uh, separated instance. So the container has the adapter, the VSA type interface in, in usual. So the container is connected to the host network stack. So this is the, the similar way, uh, the same way in the physical environment. This is a very traditional abstraction to connect the, the different instances. They're using the adapters and rings. So this is a conventional abstraction. So, but we know there is a overhead in the container, current container networking using this abstraction. So container involve, containers involve the virtual NICs and the virtual bridge, like the Docker Zero, and the NAT in the host network stack, then the fiber or uh, the wire. So we call this the long data path. So from application to network interface card. So the, this, pic, this figure indicates the protocol stack in the network stack architecture. The, uh, uh, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, okay. So the, in the native parameter host, the application writes the data to the socket and the network stack processes the data and divided the data into the packet. And there, is, there are the IP, uh, IP layer and the Ethernet layer, then the data is transmitted to the wire. But the, in the container network stack architecture, there, that is very long from application to NIC. So application write the data and the, there is the TCP, UDP, the layer four stack and the IP stack, Ethernet stack and the packet trans packets are transmitted to the VSA type interface and the host network stack receives the packets and the process it in the bridge and uh, not to, for, for the mask to, for masquerade and then the, uh, sorry, the looting and the masquerade and the transmitted to the wire. So that is a very long data pass and it causes the performance degradation as shown in these graphs. So the, in, the, our, in our preliminary experiments, the serious pit degrades the, by the 50%, the half, and it, increases, it also increases the latency by 55%. Uh, so this overhead is uh, well known. So there are some the state of the art container networking technologies in the both the uh, I'd say the, this community and the research uh, areas. So the first one is the interface virtualization. It so this approach is connecting the uh, sorry this approach 
is the, how to say, the atta attach the virtual network interface directly to the container like the Mac VLAN interface or SRIOV. So, but and uh, another approach is the optimizing the network stack, entire or part of network stack using such the netmap or DPDK. So the the uh, famous example is the free flow published by the Microsoft in the Hotnet and uh, maybe Rust and SDI. So the, in the free flow, a free flow implements the all of the network stack using the DPDK and the RDMA. And the Slim is also a part of this approach. So Slim implement uh, very fast the host network stack using the XDP. So, but uh, both approaches have the advantages and disadvantages. In the interface virtualization, the containers, direct containers are directly exposed to the outer networks so that the uh, outer networks must manage the IP address or port numbers or firewall and the rules for containers. So maybe the, it complicates the outer network management. And in optimized network stack approach, so it is a feasible way, I think, but uh, it has also a uh, disadvantage because uh, in optimized network stack approach, the long data path does not disappear. That means there are two network stack for containers and the uh, host. So I think, so there are the same the overhead from the architectural view. So in our, in this study, so we, advocate the third approach, the bypassing the container network stacks. So let's think about uh, just a very simple container and the, in, the, in the micro service architecture principle. The container is just an application execution environment and maybe not interested in how packets are delivered. Then we think the container's network stack can be bypassed. So let us consider a very the simple example so let us consider, uh, re let's consider a very simple HTTP server on a container. So the user client, like uh, your laptops, the browser send a GET request or TCP request to the, uh, to the uh, global IP address. So this global IP address is uh, assigned to the host network stack. Then the, this packet is uh, nutted and transmitted to the container network stack through the VSA interface. And if the container does not container container does not have the network stack, that means the container uses the host network stack directly, the user con uh, user client send us uh, uh, uh. Sorry. Uh, uh. Uh, okay. So the as a result, so please uh, there is no difference. Okay, this one is better. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Come <laughs> So the from the data communication perspective, the client user client send the, the same the identical data in both cases. So there is no difference from the data communication perspective. So this is the reason we ad advocate the containers networks that can be bypassed. So a container is just an application execution environment and the applications in the containers are insensitive to the network, how packets are delivered, then we can bypass the container network stacks. But the network stack separation should be retained because uh, so Docker has the option to share the host network stack with containers, but in this case, container uses the arbitrary the network resources like IP address or port numbers of the host network stack. So it can lead the uh, malicious or unintended use. So we think network stacks should be separated. But so to do this, the separating the network stack and bypassing container uh, network stack, to, so to do this, so we need a new mechanism. So here, ah, oh sorry. So connecting the application or container to the host stack with the proper access control to prevent the such partial usage. So this mechanism should be there, the boundary between the container and the host. So we know there is the socket layer. So our approach is the socket grafting. So it grafts the socket in the containers onto the sockets in the host network stack. 
So this, this picture illustrates the data path of the socket grafting. Application sends data to the socket layer by the socket-related socket system calls. Then the data is transferred to the socket layer in the host network stack, then the processed by the host network stack. So there is one network stack, so there is no uh, overhead due to the container, stack, container network stack architecture. So it has the two advantages. The one is that there is just one network stack, so it can mitigate the overhead due to the container networking. And another one is that this approach is the just the enhancement on the socket layer, and this is the data communication channel design in the socket layer. So it is implemented from the, the network stack implementation. So it can be applied to the current very matured Linux network stack implementation, and if the future, in the future, the network stack will re-implement in full scratch, then the socket grafting approach can be applied, we think. So this is the approach, and the next is the concrete mechanism. So we implemented the uh, a socket grafting as a new address family called AF graft. So applications in containers create the AF graft socket, then the AF graft sockets are grafted onto the a other address family socket in the host network stack. So the application in the container write the data using the writer system core, then the data is also written into the host address, uh, other address family socket in the host network stack. So this is uh, the grafting between the sockets. Very simple, I think. So the, to grafting the socket from to the other socket, we need to specify the which AF graft socket should be grafted onto which other AF sockets. So to do this, we use the, the bind system core semantics. So the from the man page of the bind, so the best, the original operation of the bind is assigning the names to sockets. So fgraft is a new address family, so fgraft also has its the new uh, name for the bind. So it is the graft endpoint. So it graft endpoint is identified by, by arbitrary string, and fgraft kernel module manages the mapping between the fgraft endpoint and other address family endpoint. So in AFINet, the endpoint means uh, IPv4 address and the port number, and in AFINet 6, the endpoint is IPv6 address and the port number. So for example, the EP-HTTP, the graft endpoint, is grafted onto the host endpoint 10.0.0.1 and port 80, like that. So, and uh, F graft manages these mappings in the par network namespace. So in this example, the container one has the only EP HTTP F graft endpoint. So that container one can use only the EP HTTP graft endpoint. So that means that it can prevent the such malicious or unintended use of the host network stack resources. So this is, <coughs> sorry, this is the AF graph socket API. So to describe the new name for the bind, we introduced the new socket, uh, socket other structure, socket other GR. It contains the just the uh, uh, kernel SA family T, T for identifying the family, and the just the uh, string for the graph endpoint name. And uh, to use the, to create the F graph socket, it is, very, we use the, the family, uh, the socket API. You can create the fgraft socket using the socket system call, fgraft, socstream, IP pro TCP, or zero, or IP pro TDP, and so on. And then you can call the bind system call to the fgraft socket using the socket GR. Then the, the fgraft socket is the grafted onto the, the host endpoint host endpoint associated with the graph endpoint by the mapping table. So this example shows the uh, socket for the server side the application. And uh, of course, AF graph can be used for the outbound connections, like the client side socket. So it is easy because the client socket just uses the 
the how to say the ephemeral port, the random port number for the source ad, source endpoint. So AF graphs supports the the such the dynamic port use. So the you can you you can call the uh, uh, you can create the FGraph socket using FGraph stream IP Pro TCP for the client socket. Then the call the bind to to graft, and uh, you can call connect to this socket. Then you can use the the FGraph socket as usual the TCP client socket. So we implemented the FGraph as a single kernel module. At it is available on the GitHub, and uh, so the important point one uh, import unimportant thing is the, the grafting is uh, implemented as a function call. There is no messaging or queuing or buffering. That means it is very minimal, the overhead. Actually, so the, how to say, the implementation of the send message of AF graph socket just calls the implementation of the host socket. So, yeah. And uh, to manage the AF graph and the host endpoint mapping tables, I modified the IP root too, so you can the configure the mapping table using the IP graft add EP and type IP beyond add, add and so on, like the IP root add or IP root dev. So we evaluated the performance improvement using the two hosts connected via a 40 gigabps link, and uh, so the. Uh, we compare the F graph with the native host performance and uh, Docker zero. Th that means the NAT, the default not content, uh, default container networking. So this is a script to test result. So as you can see, the F graph successfully mitigate the script degradation due to the the long data paths involving the two network stack in container and host network stack. So F graph's performance is comparable with the uh, host native host performance, and in latency perspective, it is the same. The F graph also mitigate the uh, degradation from the latency, and uh, more evaluation results about the NZINX, the HTTP benchmark, and the zero MQ benchmark are available on the by, by the research paper published by the ACM, and it is open access. So this is the the. Has the introduction of F graft, and in this talk, I want I'd like to the demonstrate the F graft using some practical tools. So F graft is a new address family. So existing applications cannot use the F graft without the modifications. So it maybe the modifying the existing application source code is, is not so uh, does not require so significant effort because of the very similar, uh, very familiar socket API, but it is, we know it is sometimes very hard to maintain the out of three the source code. So we developed a, a, a shared library using the LD preload, libgraft.combat.so. It is a hijacking library using the LD preload. So this library overrides the System uh, socket related system calls and then convert the AF depend the operations into the AF graph uh, capable ones. So, so the libgraph lib convert.so with LDP load overrides the socket system calls and uh, it returns the AF graph to socket instead of the AF inet or AF inet 6. And uh, it this library also overrides a bind system call, so to, to convert the Sokada in or in six into the Sokada GR for graft endpoints. And also, and connect send, send to and send message are hij uh, hijacked. So as, as you know, the such client socket does not require a bind system call to use, but the F graft, F graft socket require bind to determine the host endpoint. So we is the so to so we so to convert uh, such the client socket source code such application into the F, F graph capable one we is the uh, technique called the bind before connect that determines the source uh, endpoint for the connect so and this uh, so you can configure the which the gra which F I net or I net six endpoint should be converted in. On should be converted into which the AF graft 
uh, endpoint, uh, you can use the, some, the two environmental variables. For example, in this case, the zero application try to bind to 0.0.0 colon 80, equal, then the libgraph hijack convert the, this Sokada in into the Sokada GR with EPE hyphen HTTP hook. So, the, so let me demonstrate. Okay, this, I have this just uh, uh, event, the latest ATS release, and IP graph, then the, this is the, the usage of IP graph, then so the, so let's create IP net NS add test, then the sudo IP net NS exec test IP graph add and name EP test type IPv4, for example, loopback and port 8080. Oops. Ah, sorry, I've got the other. Okay, then the net NS exec test IP graph to show. In the, in the net NS? Ah, okay, okay. How are you going to combine two IPs and IP graph that you have So that good point. Uh, so the host network stack has the all routing tables and the interfaces, but uh, in the net NS, there is only loopback interface, so. So repeat the question. <laughs> so if I have an application that is doing IP packet info or bind to IF, what is it going to do? I, I mean, I so, so basic, a more fundamental question. A network stack is usually four things. It is interfaces, addresses, routes, and sockets. You only talked about sockets. You've talked about mapping addresses to a namespace, which is fine. Uh, but inside your container, you no longer see routes and you no longer see interfaces. So all the socket APIs that need those, what are they going to do? Uh, okay, so I think his message, I'm trying to answer for him, because uh, he, he, you want a new way of doing networking, right? Is he, you, you don't care about interfaces, am I correct? Yeah, so the, the applications in container does not care the, such the, how to say, the interface and the route. Uh, so, so I think, I, I think, yeah, I think the high order question here is this, right? If you are using a socket in any environment, it has to know things like, am I going to collide on ports? Am I picking the right routing to pick an interface? Can I listen on this? Can I bind to an anycast IP? Uh, so how, the, because interfaces are hidden, yeah. The application cannot unilaterally decide how to make those decisions if it used to make those decisions. So it is the, yeah, I think it is depends on the use case. So the, I think the, so in Kubernetes, the applications doesn't, actually doesn't care the such the actual IP addresses because the sub cross IP abstract the, or hidden the detail of the network stacks. So applications, does not care the such. So, so it's for a subset of applications. It's not for everybody. It's for a specific use case. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. Um, so I think I, I think the point here, and maybe this is an ongoing work slide. Um, there is a, I think there's a control plane that's missing, that's outside, right? There is something else that needs to come in and say, you application are special, you can only bind to these things, you can only see these four or five routes and you can use AF graft and get the direct connection. But if you say that a generic networking application running inside a container should be able to do all of its things, it won't work. So there's one component somewhere that's missing that is going to do synchronization. Yep, so the, the, 
the after the slide mention, mentions, but uh, yeah. so as you can, as you say, the network sensitive applications doesn't work on such the container. Yes, that, that is the limitation. Yeah. We, we're kind of running out of time, so. May, may I continue? Yeah, yes, please. <laughs> so, as you say, the, uh, sorry. So, um, but on one slide, you were actually showing that you were using LD preload to load a library, which would then be applying those, um, you know, heuristics to all applications and not just selectively some applications. So are you expecting that long-term um, individual applications that run only in a container would be converted to use AFGraph natively? Or would you be looking into some kernel or other user space level, like converter inside the uh, container that would be taking care of that? The ideal case is that the, if the application supports uh, AFGraph natively, is the ideal case. And so this the LD preload based toric is just uh, how to say the uh, transition. So that is the workaround for the current applications. So are you expecting that um, open source applications detect whether they are running in an AF capable AF graph capable container and then switch between different address families, or how do you expect that to um, you know to be done with regards to Linux distributions? The best way is the, uh, I think the applications code uh, will be the AF, AF independent source code, in AF independent code, and then the get other info supports the AF graph. Then the... <laughs> Have you considered to uh, use namespace isolation uh, for the socket interface? Sorry, what interface? Uh, the namespaces in the kernel. Because uh, this is what you actually achieve. Isolation of different containers into their own space. Huh. So oh. eventually the namespaces could be the isolation layer for the socket interface. Have you considered this? Not yet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. <Okay>. Quick. <laughs> well, quick one. Or so after the demo. Oh, yeah, after. Okay, let him finish his demo. Because <laughs> that, that means you have an exciting talk, right? Look at everybody wants to, uh, wanting Thanks. to pounce on you. So in this, this container has only one the graph to end the point without the <laughs> looting table entries and the uh, interfaces. And then the, so the this graph command is uh, just a wrapper to set up the, the library for LD preload. So my I zero 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 colon zero, sorry. Go, go, san, go. Then th this means that all the bind for the in, in this range is converted to AF graph, so called the GR, so EPHTTP. Then, okay, start to the IPath3 as a server. Wait, oh sorry. Ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> or? Ah, huh? <laughs> ah, sorry, EP test. Good error handling. Okay, then the, this IPA3 process is uh, listening on the EP hyphen test graph endpoint with uh, the interfaces and uh, routing table entries. So this is a socket layer communication channel. So in host network stack, so there is a listen, listening process. So then we can use the IPA to the ATAT, oops. Huh? Ah, ah. <laughs> IP graft at EP test two type IPv4 other one port smaller eighty one.
Ja. Ja. Test. Relax. <lacht> Okay, then the hyper graft my graft my graft my eye. Zero each hyper three minus minus four. Ah, equal. Okay, maybe it will be successful. Ah. Thank you, thank you. So then we can the new communication channel between the containers uh, or the, between the network namespaces without uh, interfaces. So sorry for I, I spent a very long, long time. Oops. So and I have the, another demonstration using the Docker integration, but maybe I spent too much time. So yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> and uh, so as you, as you said, fgraft has some the many the limitations. So F first, fgraft does not improve the network stack performance itself because it's just a data communication channel design. So the, and uh, fgraft assumes that the application is insensitive to network stack. That means the how packets are delivered. So if the application focusing on such packet handling, like the NFV, container-based NFV, it cannot work with the F-graft. So, and the, also you can say the LTP load trick is the, just a workaround for the existing applications as is. So the LTP load is uh, not always applicable to the, any applications. So the, for example, the Golang doesn't, doesn't use the libc, so it cannot be hijacked. So the conclusion, I introduced the socket grafting and uh, F-graft as an implementa uh, concrete implementation. So, and the comment and suggestions are welcome, so, but uh, already too many. So, and uh, I'm, I'm finding a good way to integrate uh, this F-graph mechanism into the container platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, this is actually quite exciting. I think uh, you ran into a uh, port collision issue. This is, uh, so there are some, real problems to solve with respect to the host, but this is very exciting because it's very useful. And thank you very much for the talk. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, who's the next speaker? So, um, I, I do still need to get rid of one question, which uh, is, do you know what SCM underscore rights is? Sorry? Do you know what SCM underscore rights is on a Unix socket? Have you ever heard of that? Has, who here in the room knows what that is? Can you please raise your hand? That is way less than I expected because what you just described is perfectly viable already by user space. You don't need a new address family, you don't need anything, you just need the appropriate user space daemon. It's, it's, sorry about it like the- It's like an offline conversation. Yeah, uh, but I, I do He want, might have solved your yeah. problem. Okay, next. Uh, we have